Hello and welcome to another episode of I Watch This As An Adult Movie Reviews. I'm your host, Mikkel Ford. We're going to be doing a retro review today, of course. Uh, it's Sunday, Retro Sunday. Uh, we're going to be reviewing... I'm sorry, this movie just took a lot out of me. We're going to be reviewing... Scary Movie 2 from 2001. Let's just let's just get into it. Like I said, this movie drained me. I'm not even going to lie. Let's get into the technical, shall we? This movie was directed by Keenan Ivory Wayans. It was written by Sean and Marlon Wayans and a bunch of other people. I didn't catch everybody's name, but this movie had like about like six, seven writers. Oh, God. Um... The budget for this movie was $45 million. The box office was $141.2 million. So it made a lot of money, of course. Uh, I saw this movie on cable. Like, I don't really have, like, this real elaborate story about how this movie changed my life and helped me through puberty or whatever shit. I just thought it was a really silly, dumb movie, you know, and I liked it as a kid. Uh, but let's see how I like this movie as an adult, shall we? They start off with the foolishness off top. Like, foolishness galore off top. You got old white people singing Shake Your Ass by Mystical. Saying the N-word and all types of shit. Um, they linger on Natasha Leon, Like, pissing. Like, she has like a, like a scene where like she pees. And, like, she's peeing for, like, at least a minute and a half. At least a minute and a half. Uh, also, uh, Natasha Leon looks super young in this movie. Uh, I don't know how old she is. Like, this is, this has to be, like, like, a year after she did American Pie. So, she may be in her late teens. She may be... 18, 19, maybe even 20, you know, she maybe, but she looks super young and she's super short. Like she looks like a little girl in this movie, but, and like, she's supposed to be a parody of uh, Linda Blair's character in The Exorcist, which I feel like if you did an Exorcist joke today, like young people wouldn't get it. I feel like that's what that movie's like 50 years old now. So like I don't think young people would get that, which is a which is a problem that this movie has. I'll go into that in depth later in the in the review. I'm gonna go into that. Uh James Woods is here also. He makes a cameo looking like the creep he is, just looking all out creepy. It's fitting that he plays a priest. Um they also like go like way too overboard with the gross out humor. And, like in the first five minutes, like it's just gross out humor. You know, if I was, I was like what fifteen? I want to say at the time this movie came out, maybe maybe even sixteen. But like if I was older, like if I was the age I am now, if I saw that first five minutes, I'd probably walk out of the theater. Like no bullshit, I'd probably walk out of the theater. I was like. Huh. I see what type of movie I'm in for. I'm gone. <laughs> you know, like that's that would be that. Like, yeah, like they need to gross out humor. And I'm not I'm not much of a fan of gross out humor myself, you know, and body fluid. So like that was just kind of hard to watch. You know, half of this movie was hard to watch. There's a lot of body a lot of body fluid gross out humor, and I'm just like, ugh, ugh. you know, <laughs> like I don't know how I watched it back then. It's like I've never been a fan of gross out humor. I've never liked that shit. But um after that we finally get to like the main characters of the movie. Anna Ferris and Marlon Wayans return as uh Cindy and Shorty. Sean Wayans is back as gay Ray. Uh they wasted no time with him being gay. They wasted no goddamn time. <laughs> Where like the first movie they kind of ease you into him being gay. They're like, nah, they push the limits with him on this one. Like, he is 
overtly and almost offensively gay. You know, like every guy that he's around, he wants to fuck or like he's taking or he's taking like sexual advantage of or whatever, you know, like it's just it's kind of it's kind of offensive in a way. You know, like where it was kind of subtle in the first movie, like they go overboard with with it in this one. Um, Regina Hall is back as Brenda, which I feel like she is like the overall highlight of this movie. I feel like she's the overall highlight of this movie because she's actually funny. Like she's the funniest thing in this whole movie. Uh, Regina Hall is really good at slapstick humor. She really is that really good at slapstick humor. She's almost like a, she's almost like a, a modern day Lucille ball, you know? And I don't think, I don't think she gets enough credit for that. She does not get enough credit for that. Like she is, she is a great physical comedian and like, it just goes under. Look, she's a good actress too. Like I've seen her in some serious stuff where like, she's really good. But when it comes to comedy, like she's a one, she's very good at physical comedy. Uh, but like she doesn't get a lot of credit for that. Uh, but we also have new characters that join the crew. Uh, Chris Masterson plays Cindy's new love interest, Buddy. David Cross plays the white uh, paraplegic professor's assistant. Uh, we got Tim Curry here who plays a horny professor named Professor Oldman. Uh, Tori Spelling is in here as Cindy's new needy friend, Alex. Uh, and Kat, uh, we got Kathleen Robertson in here as the sex pot of the crew, Theo. Uh, that's her. That's that's what she does. Um, we also have uh, Chris H- Elliott here. Chris Elliott is here as Hanson, who is the caretaker of uh, this place called Hell House, which is where the 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 kids are going to be the kids, quote unquote will be staying (laughs) and like his running gag his running gag is that he has like this disgusting deformed hand you know like that's that's the running gag with him he's like yeah he's gross and he has a gross hand and he touches shit with it and he tries to touch you with it like there's a scene in here where like he flat out just like takes advantage of a turkey like just flat out just takes advantage of it it's fucking gross you know, like it's really, it's really gross. Um, there's supposed to be a plot here. There's supposed to be a plot in this movie about like, they, like I said, they're staying in a haunted house in a haunted mansion, and there's this like underlying story that Cindy looks like the guy, the ghost. There's a ghost in the house, and Cindy looks like the ghost wife or some shit, but. Who really gives a fuck, really? Like they don't, cause they don't give a fuck about the, the the plot. They give up on it. Like it, it's just gonna lead to like a hacky fucking joke anyway. Really, like that's all. It, that's all it leads to is hacky jokes. Like all the humor in this movie is either gross out humor or outdated references to other movies. Like, like some of these movies I forgot even existed. Like. They make a reference to what lies beneath. Like, who even remembers that movie? Like, honestly, who remembers that movie? Like, uh, other than me, and I didn't even really see it. I remember, I remember the commercials for it. I believe it starred uh, Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. I think like Michelle Pfeiffer was like possessed or something like that. I don't know the I don't really know the plot of it. I know Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer were in it and it was supposed to be like a horror it was like it's supposed to be like a horror thriller. I guess like Harrison Ford was cheating on Michelle Pfeiffer and as like I said, I guess Michelle Pfeiffer got possessed by the side chick or some shit like that. I I don't know. I've never seen the movie, which is why I'm like, who remembers that movie? Because like no one talks about it. Nobody talks about that movie at all. I've never seen a video about what lies beneath. I've never even seen people bring up what lies beneath. You know, like, that's a movie that's just lost in time. Um, I don't think Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer talk about what lies beneath. 
Uh, Tim Curry. Let's let's talk about Tim Curry. Like Tim Curry got the fuck out of this movie while he still had his dignity, bro. Like he got his check and he said deuces. He said, "I'm getting the fuck out of here, man." And like, remember, this is this is a man that is dressed in drag. You know, like this is a man that was in Rocky Horror Picture Show. He played a goddamn transvestite. Uh, and he was in another movie called uh, Loaded Weapon One, where he played like a Girl Scout. He was like a Girl Tim Curry Girl Scout. Like this guy has done, uh, just like he's done these things. But scary movie was too much for him. He was like, "I'm get the fuck out of this dumbass movie." <laughs> he was like, "Let me get my check. Get the fuck up out of here. Kill me, kill me off." You know, like and they and like they kill him off. You never see him. He's like the only person in this movie that stays dead because everybody else is like oh they're dead but then they come back to life you know like tim curry is the only person in this movie that stays dead and he's just like yeah keep it that way i don't want to be associated with this shit no more you know like he's like give me what you owe me and get me the fuck up out of here but like tim curry like i said tim curry does his part with grace and class and he because like his jokes he don't go like real far with his jokes. He's just like, oh, I'm a horny professor who likes to fuck co You know, that's that's his that's his uh that's his his shtick. That's his shtick. He's like, I'm just a horny old professor who likes to take advantage of co And <laughs> that that's it. That's they don't go really really far with his character. His character's really one dimensional. It really is. A lot of these characters are really one dimensional because if you noticed, I haven't mentioned Sean or Marlon Wayans yet. You're like, it's I don't know what to say about those two characters, man. Because like those two characters just devolve, like those just those characters just devolve from what they were in the first movie. They're not even funny. They're not funny anymore. They were kind of funny in the first movie. They're not funny here. Like they just make Ray more gay. And they make Shorty more dumb. He's like, oh, Shorty's dumb and he likes weed. And he might rob you. You know, like, that was the running gag with with these two. And, like, Ray is gonna, Ray is gonna take advantage of you. You know, like, that, which is, which now, like, that kind of sends the wrong, like, signal about gay people. You know, like, not, gay people don't do that. They don't just attack every man they see. You know, that's not what they do. But, like, you couldn't do this movie today. You really couldn't do this movie today. <laughs> this movie would get would get boycotted and picketed. You know, I don't think I don't think this movie would stand the test of time today. I really don't. Um I mean like the jokes are already outdated. I looked at all the, I looked at all these goddamn jokes. I was just like, oh my god. I was like, who remembers that shit? Like who remembers who remembers the basketball uh commercial that was a that was like a i don't even remember what shoe store that was i think it was Foot Locker. i think Foot Locker did like this commercial back in the day where it was just like a bunch of guys playing basketball you know like they were like playing basketball in rhythm or some shit like that they make fun of that i'm like who remembers that shit nobody nobody remembers that shit like fucking 22 years later it was like oh okay all right Nobody remembers that shit. Like, there's the, there's probably, this this movie has this movie has aged poorly. It is aged poorly. All the jokes of of, of the time. Uh, and it, it was, it's just oh god. It's just like, who's gonna remember this shit? Like. What kid, what guy, like, there's people that are, like, in their 20s now that were born when this movie came out. Uh, they, they don't remember none of this shit. They don't remember none of this. You can't show anybody that was born in 2001 or 2002 and beyond this movie, and they're going to get it. They're not going to get it. I was like, this movie was, this movie is very of its time. Like, very of its time. Uh, let's talk about Cindy. Cindy. Cindy is one dimensional too. I guess her running gag is like she's gonna end up sucking someone's dick, you know, because that's what they did with her in the first one. 
I don't know if that is a running joke. I didn't see any of the other movies. I heard they're worse. Um, but I didn't see any of the other movies. Cause I, so I don't know if that is a running joke in the rest of the movies. I stopped right here. I stopped at Scary Movie 2. Fuck it. Uh, but yeah. This movie is embarrassingly bad. And pretty fucking annoying. It's, a, it's an annoying ass fucking movie. I can't believe I liked this shit as a teenager. Uh, and like, I'm embarrassed that I liked it. I was like, I looked at this movie and I fucking cringed because I was like, oh my God, I like this shit. You know, <laughs> I was like, I like this shit. I can't believe this. Uh, but yeah, Regina Hall and that parrot, there's a funny parrot. The parrot's funny. Like, they're the only funny things about this movie. Other than that, there are no redeeming factors about this movie. It's actually a step down from the first movie, which I feel had a bit of cleverness to it. But this one felt rushed, and it felt like a cash in. That's pretty much all I got to. That's pretty much all I got to say about it. Like, there's there's pretty much not much to this movie. Like there's not a lot going on in this movie except gross out humor and outdated jokes. That's it. That's pretty much it. I get this movie a one out of five. Sadly, this closes out Wayne's month. And this will be the end of Wayne's month. This is the last Wayne's month I will be doing because there are no more Wayne's Brothers movies uh, that I've seen as a teenager or a kid. So this is it. There are more Wayne's Brothers movies out there, but all of them came after I was a kid. They came when I was an adult. So I can't really do those because that's not the theme of this podcast. So I got to do something else. Uh, we're going to have an another specialty month of May. Uh, so join me next year. Next year in May, we will be doing Wesley Snipes month. Paying tribute to the man himself, Wesley Snipes. Always bet on black. Until next time, peace.